Recently, Northwood released a graphics overhaul to SL in the 13.0 update. What? So instead of just playing around in literally the same version of SL but with more lights, I decided to make this video because there's a lot to talk about. One of the reasons for this graphics uplift was the new version of Unity. SL has been stuck on 2019.4 for many years now. Some of you might be wondering, why didn't they just update it earlier? Well, updating Unity is a bit different from updating Windows. From version to version, some things get deprecated and some things change. A great example of it is Mega Patch 2. Around that time, Unity deprecated their own networking system called Unit. So Nonford was forced to stop development on everything and focus on porting SL to Mirror. A whole year of development for a new medkit model and an old hat. Thanks, Unity. But since 2020, there was another factor which could have prevented Northwood from updating. A couple of years ago, Unity started branching out and acquiring a lot of companies. I still have no idea why they've bought Parsec. And some developers started to notice that the engine itself was being quite neglected. Constant errors, glitches, crashes, and everyone's favorite Microsoft Revisual C Compilador version. These things didn't make the game unstable, at least most of the time, but it made it a nightmare to work with. But then in 2022, Unity bought a malware company and the CEO called developers uh, functioning individuals. And suddenly Unity pulled their crap together and now I can even create a new project. It used to take me 10 hours to get that working. But updating Unity won't just magically give you better graphics. And this is where the second buzzword comes in. <laughs> the High Definition Render Pipeline, or as Unity calls it, High Definition RP, is a render pipeline that is supposed to rival Unreal Engine in terms of graphical fidelity and baking a cake with your computer. A render pipeline is exists, and it pretty much takes care of rendering the graphics from the engine to your display. Currently in Unity we have three, built-in, and the aforementioned as it was built using the built-in one, mainly because it was made with Unity 5 where things used to work and there was no other alternative. And when switching pipelines became possible, they just stuck the built-in one because at that time the pipelines were quite underdeveloped. But I guess now it's good. And I'm just gonna take their word for it because I stopped caring about it many years ago when I had to make my own networking system because I was using HDRP. It's a long story. Also, a cell can now technically have ray tracing. However, why? Ray tracing is just a random password that makes games look uh, different. And I'm not saying better because I honestly couldn't tell the difference. It's just a piece of technology that finds usage in very specific areas and kills your performance. Do you want to have one fifth of the frame rate in exchange for, well, nothing? Now, if you have ears, you might have heard about this thing called balance, and the lack of it in this game. I can speak for everyone, but personally, 096 is inescapable, and 079 just teleports to me and presses a button. Now, I was rather excited to see how they are gonna change them or remove them completely from the game, but... Nothing. After managing to make this game run on my very expensive toaster, I was finally able to see that the main factor in determining if around would be fun were the non-presence of those two menaces. Because then my fun would be cut short by a door or the inability to use my eyes. You again! You literally press a button and I die! Some time ago, SL was changed from a funny not so VR chat sandbox game where the most deadliest weapon was the staircase into an actual game. It's no longer about role playing or having fun in a voice chat. It's not only about the gameplay that is unable to support such a way of playing. And we believe the biggest problem we're facing right now is strongly related to level design. The facility and game objectives are simply too linear and don't provide enough unique gameplay scenarios. On top of that, it encourages camping. My brother in Christ, shy guy try not to cry ability. I'm unsure if they will ever address these SCPs, but honestly, I might just go back to playing Super Mario Maker on my 3DS. Before the update was released, Northwood announced in their blog post that they will also include some quality of life improvements. So I've decided to make my own wishlist that I thought the game could really use. Let me just read it for you. Move the operational guide to the spectator so that people would be able to learn the game while not having to risk missing a spawn wave. Move the main menu settings to the post screen. For the love of everyone with the default Unity icons. Add proper UI to the post settings and round summary screen. Server queue, bottom text. Better server browser. Audio sliders, please, I am tired of the... Let me just do the math and... Yeah, they haven't added any of these. I think my list pretty accurately describes what the most current users and new users would like to see in the game, but we haven't seen any of these. Most of the time, indie games are quite good with shipping with a lot of polish on day one, but that's not the case here. SL was released as a voice chat application with guns, and it remained pretty rough over the years. It seems like the devs just laser focus on the next big new rework instead of focusing on the smaller things which a lot of people can feel the lack of. Now, all the footage you've been seeing in this video wasn't actually mine. You see, I spent almost 1000 quid on this game, and even then I was barely able to get above 60 FPS. This is due to Northwood's proprietary anti-cheat SLAC, which is terribly optimized for Ryzen CPUs. This just seems like a parody. There is no game developer that in their right mind would allow for something like this to be the case for over a year now. So they decided not to purchase the Patreon and use other people's footage instead. And I took off that 20 quid from the total price of the computer, and I will continue doing this until I reach zero. If you don't know, I am a game developer, or more 
more precisely a tool developer. And for almost half a decade now, I've been working on a simple drag and drop library that mainly aims to add accessibility to any game with a couple of clicks. It may not be perfect, but I'm still working on it. So imagine how I must feel every time I sit down to play STPSL. It's unusable on most computers, does not contain any form of tutorial, there is no ability to host a non-dedicated server, accessibility settings are close to non-existent, and settings themselves are locked in the main menu where you are unable to even test how the game runs. It seems like the player base of this game has to form their own habits around it, not the other way around, meaning that most new players need to waste a lot of time and even money to get it working. So no, Norfoot, I will not pay you a single dollar until I will make back the money I had to spend just to run your trash. And no, replacing a CPU was never the solution. It's literally just this game that has a problem with it, and because a Ryzen 2 Intel CPU adapter doesn't exist, you will have to take apart your entire computer for a single, stupid, 5-year-old Polish Unity game. Now, because you're my brother in the flag, I will give you a discount. When I get my hands on this update and it will actually let me reach the frame rate cap of my monitor, I'll take off the graphics card and the power supply from the total amount because I probably would have bought them anyway even if the game ran fine. So that leaves us with the worst case scenario of not being able to play patron betas until a time point. Do I think they will suddenly collapse because of my 5 cents? No, I hope at least half a person in this company will realize how stupid all of this is. As for what this update is, it's actually not that bad. As you can clearly see, the graphical quality of this game has increased quite substantially, and most of the boring boxes we call the rooms now have a lot of contrast to them. I saw a lot of concerns about the darkness, but like, you can still see things. To jog your memory, the Parabellum update revamped the lighting system and made the game darker. That wasn't bad in itself, but look at the surface zone. This is literally a dark screen. You're probably watching this video on your phone and most likely you turn down the brightness of your display to save up on battery life. What are you even supposed to make out here while watching a YouTube video of this game? At this time, using Nvidia's game filters became quite popular, because there was literally no way to tell the difference between an MTF or a Chaos Insurgent. I had to frequently boost my monitor's brightness when playing, which combined with my very creative desktop background, turned out tabbing into meeting God himself. Also, keep in mind, this was on the highest brightness level. So if you were to use the settings that the game wanted you to use, it would look something like this. But the problem wasn't that surface was dark, the problem was for how long it remained like this. The 11.0 update lasted for 1 year and 3 months. It received a minor hotfix later that gave us the SCP which I can be bothered to look up the numbers of, but the problem still remained. And then we were left in the dust for a whole year with the addition of random lag spikes, terrible performance and terrible balancing. So saying how it took them only 3 months to announce the next beta, it seems like this might be happening less frequently from now on. But we will still have to wait and see if this is just a fluke or an actual change to their development pipeline. So, conclusion. Did you know you can change your STP preferences in the operational guide? I mean, I completely forgot about that, but like, how can you blame me? Why is this thing in the tutorial of all places? Remember to drink your operational guide, kids.